Towards the end of the day yesterday, Fallout 76's public test server got a big 20 gigabyte update. In this video, I want to detail a lot of what was added in this, some of the officially reported things, some of the unofficially reported things, such as data mines that actually are far more interesting, giving us an insight into seasons as well as other Atomic Shop content on the way, which could be good or bad. Outside of that, I want to discuss this recent war on Bethesda that you may have seen pop up in several Fallout communities or at least become a discussion in them and what exactly is happening with that but overall I'll just give you a recap on some of the recent happenings with Fallout 76 with something actually pretty special at the end of this video for those of you that stick around if you guys do enjoy the content you can leave a like or subscribe a lot of you guys have been loving some of the new additions to the merch store some of you sharing images of some of your recent purchases so if you want to check out any of that it'll also be linked down below in the description so first and foremost, let's take a look at the recent PTS changes and update. This was a 20 gigabyte update, but it's not totally clear why. Some initial data mining has been done on this, but as far as new content goes, there isn't a clear 20 gigabytes, and actually there's been some content removed from the public test server. One of the big ones is legendary perks. One of the odd parts about this, at least to me, was yesterday during maintenance, it was described how legendary perks are disabled in this build while we review community feedback and we'll work to bring them back as soon as we can. So it just seemed like they were intentionally disabled because they were implementing new features or changes. As we talked about somewhat in yesterday's video, legendary perks just didn't really land with the community. People wanted more and it seems like Bethesda is actually doing that. But then today in the patch notes we got, legendary perk system is currently unavailable in the PTS. We are working to correct this as soon as we can in a future PTS update. Which makes it seem way more like it's a bug that was found with them, not necessarily to implement feedback. Either way, one of the curious parts about this, it seems like legendary perks technically still work in the PTS, you just can't access them. So for example, I was using the perk where, while using unarmed weapons, there's a chance you'll make an enemy explode, and while I was playing today, I made an enemy explode, making it seem like it's still working, I just don't have access to the menu anymore. Either way, I'm pretty excited to see what has changed or modified around these, I think it's kinda odd how they took them all down to do that. Although outside of that, we saw some changes to the Wendigo Colossus during its event. The Wendigo Colossus saw a buff, so now it'll actually take 10% less damage overall. As well, there's some miscellaneous bug fixes overall with this event, so by the time it makes it to live, it'll be in a little bit better of a state. And we actually saw a nerf to some of the new cursed weapon effects that can get added when completing this event. There were a variety of other bug fixes, I'll have the full notes linked down below, but they were definitely not the most interesting part of this. The most interesting part of of this were many of the new data mines that could be found, including several around seasons and challenges coming with seasons. Although seasons and the new challenges with them aren't actually active on the PTS, much of that content is in the files. And if you somehow missed this, seasons is one of the big new features coming to Fallout 76. It's coming with the next update, although we don't actually know when the next update is, probably late in June. And basically just by completing daily challenges, you'll be able to progress through each of the 100 ranks of this, with each rank giving a reward. Or alternatively, after two weeks, you can pay 150 atoms to unlock that reward manually. And some of these rewards are going to be unique cosmetics that you could only get via the season system. And some actually aren't even cosmetics, in-game currencies, an ammo converter, which I'll touch on, so as far as what challenges you're going to complete, it looks like all of the challenges overall are going to be very, very simple. Things like sell an item to a player or buy an item from a player, craft an item, craft an item while in a group, but that's to describe how it'd be things you do in natural gameplay and yeah, they're going to be things you'll likely do and probably don't even have to so much focus on completing these. Although while some of the challenge data mines was going on, people also found how there's actually some stuff around pets and Vault 96. It's currently labeled as do not use and not fully implemented, but there are challenges around petting a cat, feeding a cat, building a doghouse, or for Vault 96, killing Mirelurks, killing rad ants and rad toads. For the Vault 96 missions, it looks like mission 1 will be called Creature Feature, while mission 2 will be called Gone Viral. But then what I found to be far more interesting are some of the rewards you can get from Seasons. Based on the data mines, there are 77 rewards in total, out of 99 places on this board game. The 100th place is the End of Season Bundle, which actually does 
give you 500 atoms, which is pretty good. What that 77 number means is there will be 77 unique items you could earn from this. Some of these will just be different tiers of atoms, like 10 atoms, 20 atoms, 30 atoms, or separately things like gold, scrip, etc. The reason it's only 77 and not fully 99 is likely some of those currencies will be repeated. Although one of the things that was found in the past was an ammo converter. We saw the visual and the name, but now we actually have an idea as to how it will work. But again, an important note, this is a data mine from the public test server and it's not currently accessible in game. So these numbers and values are of course very subject to change. And this is again a score reward. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a microtransaction, just something you could earn by completing the score system. Functionally, the way this ammo converter works right now is it's more or less a store. You go to an ammo converter and you could sell it your ammo for ammo currency. And these are going to be in fixed amounts. Then of course you can buy ammo from the machine also in fixed amounts. All this information came from the data miners discord and this very helpful chart was posted. I'll have a link to the discord down below if you want to check it out for yourself. But basically the way this will work is let's say for 10 millimeter ammo. When you're trading this, buying it or selling it, you're doing it in quantities of 24. And if you sell 24 to this machine, you will get 30 ammo points. And then with those 30 ammo points, you can buy any of the ammos on this list. And you can see how much they cost based off that buy category. And what you'll immediately notice is it's actually way more expensive, five times more expensive compared to how much you could sell these for. So for a common use case, I imagine a lot of people have a lot of 38 rounds and a lot of people might want a lot of 308 rounds because 308 rounds you tend to burn through very quickly. So let's say you have a thousand 38 rounds to sell here. This will give you roughly 1100 points and then you want to just buy as many 308 rounds as you can. You will get roughly 80 so 1000.38 converts to roughly 88.308. And just overall, you'll find that the prices to buy things on this are extraordinarily high. It could be helpful for those of you that have just been holding on to ammo and now you have, let's say, five to 10,000. You can immediately convert those to 1,000, 2,000 of a more desired ammo type. But doing the math on this chart, you'll find you're going to have to sell a lot of a given ammo type to actually convert it. It is definitely not in your favor. And this is both good and bad. On one hand, it's just a handy tool to have it's giving us as players more choice i feel like there's a better way to balance this a way to make this way more fair but at the same time this is also a method where it won't totally harm the in-game ammo economy which is pretty popular because the pricing and conversion rates on this are just so bad for relatively bad ammo types like 0.38 that almost nobody uses, it'll be good to dump them into this because there's not a lot of buyers. But for highly sought after ones like 5.56 that maybe you just don't use, probably going to be more optimal to sell them from caps or just trade for ammo directly. One of the other questionable parts about this is that limit of 2,000 ammo points. It seems kind of low. In these last two columns, you could see what your 2,000 ammo points will get you or how you could get it. So for example, in 10 millimeter, you'll have to sell 1,584 rounds to get a full 2,000 ammo points, but it'll only buy you 312 rounds. And one of the takeaways I have from this is I wouldn't be shocked if one of the reasons this isn't super powerful or these conversions are not super ideal is that it is a score reward, which is a fairly alienating aspect. Depending on how late into the season this is to unlock, it could actually be fairly difficult to get quite a few hours of in-game time and only available for a limited time. Something as fundamental as an ammo converter seems odd to make a limited time unique item via this method. One of the other interesting things I found was last time I showed you this storefront, basically it seemed like this would be all the various rewards you could get from the score system. Some things you knew about, atoms, gold bullions, and that's actually kind of interesting, not treasury notes, but gold bullions directly, caps, script, per card packs, as well as these new vault tech supply cases. These functionally were just supply cases you opened and got a bunch of scrap. Not really a huge deal because again, it's the score system. It honestly kind of seems like a nice score reward. Except in the most recent update, we saw quite a few new additions to this. Several duplicates, perhaps just a copy paste of what we had previously or multiple slots for them. A new one such as score utility fireworks crackle. I don't really know what that could be. The score lunchbox that has been around for a while actually got a storefront image now, but we also see duplicates of the scrap boxes being listed not only as score, but as just ATX, AKA atomic shop also. And if you look, it's the only item to have 
both. The lunchbox is only listed as ATX, but that could just be legacy, and based off everything in the files, the lunchbox is only a score item. So now, of course, this is pure speculation. We don't know how this will be implemented, but it certainly makes it look like these new supply crates will actually be both score and atomic shop, which that would be a pretty aggressive move on the atomic shop for a utility item. Hypothetically, being able to buy an item that just gives you raw scrap would be pretty powerful, the most pay to win thing thus far. Although to be clear, it's literally just based off this file, it could be nothing, it is just suspicious for right now. Also found were a couple of new Fallout First items, the Bog Wanderer outfit, which just looks awesome, definitely a worthy successor to the Ranger armor, and the Firewatch tower. It's not totally clear what this will be if just a Fallout First exclusive camp item, which is kind of odd, but I guess it's better than having nothing, or if it'll actually have an additional effect like the Survival Tent, or even just another skin for the Survival Tent. But then also several other just regular atomic shop items that are on the way. Several of the berets I've been showing you, but official images of them, and then easily what is one of the coolest is that new vertebrate power armor. Which is pretty interesting because Bethesda actually added a Brotherhood of Steel logo to this one. Based off past data mines, it didn't have that little Brotherhood of Steel logo on the chest. And it does make you wonder if this will coincide with the dropping of the Brotherhood of Steel precursor quest that I talked about in yesterday's video. If you missed that video, I'll have it linked in the eye, but basically it looks like there'll be something ahead of the big quest line. A little teaser quest coming out potentially with patch 20. It's almost entirely in the files right now. And this definitely seems to suggest that those two could drop at the same time. And also, this will be a really big one for some of you, a so sorry emote. Although we can't visually see it, the entitlements for it were data mines, so it definitely looks like it's on the way. But then moving on, outside of just data mines, we do have this very odd or dramatic war on Bethesda that has recently popped up. You may have seen some posts around this where basically some users have declared war on Bethesda, and of all the reasons possible, the reason for this is PvP, and it seems like it really stems around Bethesda's inattentiveness to the PvP. PvP crowd. The straw that seems to have broken the camel's back to start this all off was actually this comment. It was described how in a future update to Fallout 76, PvP will be changed. So if you're on a team and you initiate PvP with a member of another team, it'll only be between that team member and the other team member. It won't be the two entire teams, which is how it typically would work right now. So if I get attacked by someone on another team and then I start fighting back, my entire team could also attack them. It removes PvP restrictions for everyone. And of course, this is only applying to adventure mode. And right now, the supposed goals of this group are really to try and crash servers and cause chaos. It's being described how it's going to take place this weekend on PC. I've seen others saying once update 20 drops. And there's actually been a lot of concern over this. I feel like I've seen far more discussion about the group than actually from the group itself. One of the big reasons being the actual group is very small, numbering just in the tens. And although perhaps, yes, they will be successful in crashing a couple of servers, there are literally hundreds, so I don't think this protest will actually be all that effective in changing your experience, which I think a lot of people are worried about. So for those that were concerned that Fallout 76 will be ruined this weekend, I wouldn't fret. And although many don't really agree with the topic of crashing servers to send a message, especially this message, the larger discussion of PvP in Fallout 76 is definitely one worth having, as it's just something Bethesda has outright neglected. I personally think PvP in Adventure Mode is too far gone to fix. I mean, right now, the most powerful meta would be something like this. Do you really want to play in a game where this is PvP? It just doesn't seem that fun to me. But they, of course, do have their dedicated PvP mode, which that too is in dire need of updates. Better anti-cheat, removing some of the bugginess. There are some weird or bizarre glitches, like technically, if you have a faster hard drive, you could spawn in faster than somebody else in this mode. And apparently this also works on consoles. It's not even a PC exclusive. And of course, in a battle royale, being able to spawn in faster, get some of the best loot faster, makes it so you could dominate early battles. The massive AFK or problem, the disproportionate amount of experience for just staying alive versus getting kills, which actively disincentivizes seeking out kills, the overall lack of substantial content updates to the mode. As of today, it actually is one year old and it's still in beta and it's still in need of dire change. But last but not least, I actually 
wanted to touch on something totally unrelated to Fallout 76. Tomorrow there is a PS5 event and there are several things indicating that Bethesda could have a presence here. I didn't really think it was worth a standalone video, I didn't really have another way to talk about it, so I just figured I'd throw it at the end of this one. It's Bethesda news, not Fallout 76 news. So this all could be nothing, so take it with a grain of salt, but if you wanted an extra reason to perhaps get a little excited or even just watch the one hour long PS5 event, a couple of things were all found just within the past 24 hours. For starters, how on LinkedIn, there's actually an employee at Sony who's responsible for marketing between Bethesda and Sony. So this could be something larger like actually full on marketing and support or just something minor like a large publisher having a relationship with a large console. It's likely the second of those two, but interesting nonetheless. A bunch of PS5 related dummy games just popped up on Amazon. It seems like these are all basically just PS5 placeholders for a bunch of different companies, including one for Bethesda, and they're listed as 20 20, so potentially a 2020 release date. Considering we know Bethesda has new game announcements and there is a PS5 event tomorrow, this definitely could be related. And then last but not least, this lingering one, one Bethesda employee, and this is Bethesda Game Studios specifically, does list themselves as working on a 20XX unannounced Xbox One, PS4, and PC game. This almost certainly would be Starfield, or there's some other big surprise, but of course if Starfield is releasing on PC, Xbox One, and PS4, this would likely mean it releases sooner rather than later because the next gen of consoles is coming out in 2020. If Starfield is late 2021, you wouldn't expect it to be backported on all these older consoles, or at least that's the thinking around this. There's a couple of routes you could go with this. Perhaps we'll see a surprise Starfield is coming out in 2020 tomorrow at the PS5 event. What I think is more likely is we actually hear about Deathloop or Ghostwire Tokyo. Ghostwire Tokyo in particular could be a pretty good candidate for a 2020 release, and we could see a big reveal or gameplay trailer tomorrow. And it definitely is something to keep your eyes on. Again, I didn't really know where to put this, so I just threw it at the end of this video. But overall, hopefully you guys found this video informative. Hopefully you did enjoy it. But until next time, I thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you all later. <gasps> Get me on. We're teamwork, and individual <laughs> becomes stronger. But oh my God.